It's not an overstatement to say that the Traveler is the most mysterious character in all of Tevat. Not only are their origins unknown, but even the reason they're both here right now has puzzled the minds of many players. Why did the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles trap them in Tevat? And why did the Traveler take 500 years to awaken? Well, today I want to expand on this question. Not necessarily with conclusive answers, but with speculations that might explain why the Traveler is currently here and why they took 500 years to revive. For my ease, I will be separating Aether as my Traveler and Lamine as my Abyss sibling, so I use the same pronouns rather than switching between their titles. But it's important we begin with their history. Lumina and Aether first arrived at Tevat more than 500 years ago, with their gaps currently unknown. This is because they traveled from another world that was currently being destroyed, and this was among the many chances to find a new home. Lumine woke up first in Tevat and waited for her brother, during which she slowly grew connections with the Conrian citizens as evidenced by the emotional connection she felt for the destruction, and the evident authority she carries as the Abyss Princess in the present time. When Conring was destroyed 500 years ago, she woke up Aether and demanded that they leave Tevat immediately, during which they were stopped by the Sustainer of Heavenly Principles and the opening battle leading up to their imprisonment began. The problem with this scene is that it lacks the context needed to truly understand Sustainer's motivation. She states that the Travelers are outlanders, and that mankind's irrigation is about to come to an end. But her actions of sealing them into Tevat instead of forcing the twins, essentially illegal aliens, to leave is contradictory. Why seal them in Tevat? And furthermore, why unseal them within differing time periods? We know that Lumine needed to go through her adventure and eventually become the Abyss Princess, but we also know that Aether woke up two months before meeting Paimon. There is a substantial gap between them that is unexplained. Why separate the twins and why wait for 500 years? Well, my theory is that the 500 years is preparation, and that they need to be at a certain place at a certain time, and that that 500 years is simply a waiting period. My theory is that the Travelers will eventually need to replace Celestia's god, or at least the Keeper that is being mentioned in their menu, but not in the sense of ruling Tevat. Rather, they are both meant to recreate Tevat and rid of the unpleasantries that plagued it for the many years prior. They are both meant to understand the truth of the world and play the cards of burning away the old world and ridding it of the consequences of not only the Conrian's destruction, but also the Abyssal Corruption, the ire of the dead gods in the Archon War, the laments of the Three Moon Sisters, and the corruption of the many deities that come before. Everything that tainted the old world. Perhaps even putting an end to all corruption once and for all through the purification of the Conrians, and the redemption and the reconciliation of the Archons. Two sides of the same coin, playing two different fields of perspective. Coming together, they both have different perspectives on the same world, and have the insight to re-establish a new one. Well, let's begin with this clown fiesta of a theory. I considered the idea when I inspected the two stories of the Travelers separately in the positions they both stand for as well as my considerations from the previous videos about Celestia's true intentions in the long run. There is a constant theme of conquest and burning the old world away present in Genshin time and time again. Even in the beginning of Tevat's conception, burning the old world away is a constant term. In the book Before Sun and Moon, the true lord and primordial one named Phanis was the god who conquered the land of the bishops, essentially destroying the old world to create the Tevat we know today. Phanis was known as a throne, as well as an androgynous winged creature that was born of an egg. With the establishment of Celestia, there became a new world order. The aspect of burning is also tied in very well in the current story of Genshin. The Tsaritsa wishes to burn away the old world after 500 years of waiting for her plans to come into fruition. The Abyss are essentially planning a new world order by attempting to revive their homeland after 500 years of silence. And the Traveler is currently awake to try and recuperate the states of the Seven Nations by assisting them. Each of these events happening at the same time cannot be coincidental, which is why I believe that it isn't. I believe that Celestia is aware of what both the Abyss and the Fatui are doing, and after consideration, allows it to happen with little to no resistance. Why? It's because even gods can erode. The erosion of gods is a heavenly principle that stays true for the Archons and perhaps even other gods stronger than themselves. We have seen gods lose their ability to lead, or gods who lose their forms out of necessity, and I believe that even Celestia's gods recognize the impact erosion can have on the world of Devot. Thanis, when it first conceived Devot, had four shades to assist it. 
the god of time Istaroth was amongst them. Istaroth is a god with close ties with the Archons and humanity, serving as the closest middleman that we have at the moment in the lore, given we don't know who the other three shades are canonically. Therefore, it's possible that she's the reason everything is being put into motion all at the same time. And as the god of time, she would have been able to see far into the future to know if there would be a need for a new world order. At least three of the seven gods that currently exist as Archons are undergoing through erosion, so what more the gods in Celestia who have existed for thousands of years? We know that in Genshin, immortality is nothing more than an extended lifespan, and you are bound to still lose yourself despite everything. Now do you understand why I can't give any conclusive evidence? The concept of time travel is just too difficult of a literary card to play, but I digress. Now for this theory to truly function, we need a motivation. Why do I say that the Traveler will replace them? Well, I want to look at the Travelers themselves and their correlation with the Primordial God. There isn't a lot, but there are three specifications that really tie them together. One is that both Phanis and the siblings come from other worlds and are not initially from Tevat. This was hinted by Enjo in the World Quest of 2.4, and why he was so adamant on finding the book in the first place, because it contained evidence that Celestia wasn't originally the creators of the planet itself, but rather colonized it. Phanis is known as a throne, while the Travelers share celestial and angelic resemblances to a seraph. In the opening cutscene, we see the Travelers' original wings which bear resemblance to a seraph. But we also know that the Traveler is the most attuned creature to the nature of Tevat even beyond the limitations of the Archons. As A puts it, the Traveler is an exception. The Traveler can control the elements without a vision, and the Traveler has a longer lifespan than most immortals in Tevat. And number three is that they're allegedly an exception to the erosion of the Heavenly Principles. If Zhongli and Xiao's conversations regarding the Traveler's role as a witness is indicative of anything, Furthermore, this isn't the first time that a throne appeared in this world. According to the book Before Sun and Moon, there was a second throne that descended and waged war against Phanis in the Shades. However, this second throne was defeated given that Celestia as we see today are still in charge. This means that Tevat had a history of conquest and even invasion, so the Traveler's role as a new deity to usurp Celestia wouldn't be all that tested. But the question is, why? I've just mentioned that the last time an alien entity came to Devot, they were killed. Why were the Travelers put into suspended animation instead? And was it intentional? Because this theory can go both ways. One is that it wasn't intentional to keep them alive. The sustainer had every intention of killing them right here and right now, and it was just out of the twins' divine resilience that they held on. The second is that they were meant to be put in a stasis until the final pieces of the puzzles were put into place. In the Traveler's character menu, we see this. The Keeper is fading away. The Creator has not yet come. But the world shall burn no more, for you shall ascend. The Keeper and the Creator are unknown characters at the moment, so let's try to fill in the gaps with what we know. The Creator may be Phanis, and if the Creator has not yet come, that means Phanis was virtually absent after the pursuit before the Archon War. The Keeper could be anyone. It could be Sustainer of Heavenly Principles, who is, as her title suggests, is a Sustainer of Balance, thus keeping Tevat's laws in place. It could be Paimon, who seems to lose her memories but appears to be stronger in the future given the hints we know in the past. One hint of Paimon's true origins comes in a 2.2 event. This is followed up by the RNR request and the 2.4 world quest that just makes this so much more suspicious. If you want to put it in a literal sense, the word Keeper could also be a reference to Dane's Leaf. When Dane's Leaf's character card came out, we received the title Bowkeeper, meaning that Dane has a secondary role perhaps connected to Airmansel and the Ley Lines, given that a bow is a kind of branch. But in all honesty, there is a need for a new world order. Devat's world is horribly wounded after thousands of years of corruption and wars, and the Travelers being the new hope of the people is a fascinating outlook on why Celestia would even consider bringing them back. In their own weird way, the Travelers are playing both sides with the intention of helping them. Maybe in the next couple of chapters, they'll realize that they're both fighting for the same future. Who knows? Maybe Aether will finally have a motivation to stay in Tevat, similar to how Lumine has a motivation to stay as well through the Conrians. But Celestia, for all intents and purposes, hasn't done anything without being prompted by human or circumstantial causes. For all the time that it existed, it was a lawfully neutral entity that simply upholds New World Order. 
Perhaps they just wanted to keep the travelers in Devon because it messed with the natural order in the universe. But again, why not just kill them or why not force them to leave? Perhaps there really was a reason. Maybe we just don't know yet. But that's it for me today. Regardless, my name is Astrid and thank you for chilling with me. This theory was out of the left field in all honesty. As much as I personally really love the theory that the Travelers will ascend in the future and replace Celestia as the third throne or the third god, it does have a lot of holes in it that I personally will be trying to disprove in the next video. Anyway, I'll see you all next time.